And the new trend is contraction, not expansion. And the physical economy and the stock market are no longer correlated hardly at all. So people get kind of brainwashed that, you know, if the Dow's good, the S and P's making a new high, uh, technologies are doing well, then the economy's doing well. And what it really means is the stock prices are being manipulated higher. And it's not hard to do when you have an input of excess, let's say what I call funny money going into the system. And there's really no place else to go other than the asset class. Stock market's one of the easiest places to put money into, of course, the bond market as well. So we have two things happening. We have a contraction in the global economy, and that makes it where people and nation states want to be more protective of their own selves. In other words, when your economy, your household economy contracts, you're making the same amount of money, but it's buying less. You start to be more mindful of what you purchase, what the discretionary income could go for. You have less of it. So maybe you don't go to the movies twice a month, maybe once, that type of thing. You look at that on a macro scale and you say, well, wait a minute, do I really want to sell this excess food reserve or do I really want to sell this whatever for something I might need for my own nation state so to become more protective? And then on top of that, the game of we'll give you a piece of paper and we'll take real stuff is ending. And that is because of too many people for too long have really been hoodwinked by the U.S. Treasury market saying it's the safest investment in the world when it really isn't. Anyone that's in the fourth grade arithmetic knows that this not only won't end well, but it's mathematically impossible to pay it off. And the most likely scenario is to, to quote unquote pay it off by printing the currency until people won't even accept it anymore. Now, I don't think that will actually take place with the U.S. dollar, but we'll continue on that trend. And of course, the powers that be have a backup plan, backup plan A, which is basically a central bank digital currency, which we could talk about later. So the last point is that while we're contracting and nation states are becoming more, more protective, we still see the other side of the coin with the WEF Davos group looking to continue to make globalization uh, their goal where the WHO, for example, can come out and mandate the entire world and supersede any treaty between nation states and edict that you have to adhere to what you, such and such because one, we say so, and two, because we have the legal authority to do so. So it's a very convoluted, very interesting, and very, very in cautious place to be but we have to be mindful and we have to be able to realize that we actually have the power of choice, even if the choice may quote unquote appear wrong or quote unquote appear unlawful. Uh, remember, I forget who said it. I, I love to give quotes that are, I can back up, but the one that comes to mind is a just man disobeys unjust laws. I mean, obviously we have sovereignty over our own bodies and course, with the last <clears throat> situation we found in many cases, you didn't, I mean, in the ultimate case you did, but you could end up losing your job and not be able to support your family. So how much of a choice were you given? And the answer is not much. Well, let's work all of that out. It's interesting that you said that we have sovereignty over our own bodies. And I was about to say, well, not really. And then <laughs> as you alluded to, and it's interesting to me is like, okay, we did, but you're ashamed at the, at the best, at the best you're ashamed at the worst you lose your employment, if you would. Um, so it just seems like sovereignty at every level is under attack. Um, if you would not only under attack, it's being, it's being, um, greatly infringed upon, uh, as we know it, but. Again, let's go back to the economy. I was very surprised that the Fed was as aggressive as they were in raising interest rates because you raise interest rates that fast and things break. I was equally surprised that some things broke, but not on the scale that I thought they would. And I'm assuming that though, that that is not done, that collateral damage isn't, hasn't been done. And when I say damage, the Fed certainly should have, in my view, 
the prudent thing would have been to raise rates or to raise rates, but banks started failing. And where are we at in that cycle is, I guess, is my question. And then it was also very surprisingly how dovish they were coming out in December. So where, in your view, yeah, comment about all that and answer sure. that. Where are things broken or if they're going to continue to break? Well, we don't know where we are in the interest rate cycle. I mean, you can make the argument that we've already peaked and we're going to pause for a while and then start tapering off. And that's, I give that about 80%. There's still the possibility that they'll pause and actually go higher because the market forces it higher. I'll get to that. In a and then it's really a psychological operation. I mean, you know, having my age, you know, I'm going through pretty big inflation in the United States, you know, they did such ridiculous things. I mean, you think adult people would put a badge that says win on it. And these win badges were during the Ford administration and they stood for whip inflation now. But this is the idea that, you know, if you think you're in a good economy, you are. If you think things are good, they are. You know, it's the power of positive thinking, which I'm not against the power of positive thinking, but we also have to think in terms of reality. And the reality is that the economy is contracting, things cost more, and the psychology of inflation has not been deterred yet. So even though the numbers look better from the government's perspective, is it really? And those are the questions that your average American goes out, average world citizen goes out and looks at. They don't look at uh, the economic data. They don't read the Wall Street Journal. They don't listen to financial channels. They buy gasoline and food, pay rent, and their heating bill. And if that continues to go up, the psychology of inflation hasn't left. In fact, it's really instilled further, which means that you could do whatever you want with interest rates. But if the vast population believes that something's going to cost more tomorrow than it does today, you have not beat the psychological aspect of inflation. And that's something that very few people talk about. And that's well and good, meaning good not it's a good thing but good meaning it's a powerful thing that has not been quelled yet and i don't think it will be, be with a couple of interest rates moves it may with the people that are making enough money where it affects them but not in a drastic way they still have all the discretionary income they want for example those people yeah oh inflation's down stocks are up everything's wonderful but for the average person that's just making a living they won't see it that well they'll see it entirely differently uh, coming back to interest rates being forced higher, and when you go to the bond auction and you know you put out a an offer for so many bonds at such and such a rate, and there's no one actually bidding at that level, uh, then the offer goes up, you bid bid up higher, and that means interest rates go up. So Powell actually said it about six months ago. We don't have to raise interest rates; the market's doing it for us. And I don't know if he knew what he was saying, I presume he does, but I don't know if the general public understood what he was saying. Because if you've got to stay in the dollar bill, I call the old maid, but the old maid is the best hand that you can have until it fails. So in other words, you know, why is the dollar stronger than the yen? Why is it stronger than the Canadian dollar? Why is it stronger than, you know? whatever other currency you want to compare it to. And the answer is because we, we're not printing as fast as everybody else. That's generally the truth, not always, but generally. So Zimbabwe outprinted us, you know, so therefore, you know, their currency went in the toilet. Plus they don't have an advanced bond market. There's other reasons. So we are in that trend that hasn't ended yet and the psychology hasn't been broken. So I could see a, where we have a 20% chance where we may pause and actually have to go higher, not because the Fed wants to raise it because the discount window got raised, but because the market itself said, I don't trust your dollar very much longer because I don't trust it very much longer. By the six month T-bill, I want to get this kind of a yield and interest rates go up. So don't rule that out. I'm not saying I'm right. Remember what I just said, I'm giving that a 20% chance, but I certainly can't rule it out because, you know, in this market, um, thinking is very important. And you got to think about, you know, both sides of the equation.